The Holy Tales. Should we begin with the story? Well, today's story is called The Jonah and the Whale. Long, long time ago, there lived a man called Jonah. Jonah was a prophet who lived in Israel. One day, God appeared to Jonah. Jonah, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and warn the people there. Tell them that I am going to destroy all of them and their city if they do not stop disobeying me. Jonah was not very happy with the job God asked him to do. Nineveh was a city full of bad people and Jonah knew that. He was very scared to go there. So instead of going to Nineveh, he decided to go the other way which would take him far, far away from Nineveh. He hoped God would pick someone else to do this particular job of warning the people there. Jonah got onto a ship, which was going to the farthest city he could find. He was feeling really tired. So Jonah went down to the bottom of the ship to take a quiet nap. God was very angry with Jonah, for he had disobeyed him. He knew exactly where Jonah was. He caused an enormous storm to come up. The sailors on the ship were afraid that the storm would sink their ship. They started throwing everything into the sea to lighten their ship. The storm got worse started praying to God to save them. Jonah knew what the problem was, and he also knew that there was only one thing to do. God would not stop the storm until Jonah did not do the job God asked him to do. So Jonah asked the sailors to throw him into the sea. He knew God was there with him to protect him. The sailors did what Jonah asked them to do, and immediately the storm quietened and all was calm. The sailors were astonished. They had no idea what was happening. In the sea, Jonah sank deeper and deeper. But God had different plans for him. He did not want Jonah to drown. He only wanted him to obey his orders. So, God sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah to take him down to the sea. Jonah felt very scared. He prayed to God for forgiveness for disobeying him. Finally, after three days being inside the dark, stinky belly of the fish, the fish rose up to the top of the sea and spit Jonah out onto the shore. Jonah then went to the city of Nineveh and told them to stop doing all the bad work that they were doing as this was making God very angry. The people of the city believed Jonah and God saved them. Oh my my! How did Jonah even manage to live inside the stinky belly of the fish for three whole days? That's because God was there to protect him. The Holy Tales Well, today's story is about a man named Samson who was very, very strong and all his strength was a gift from God. Long, long ago, in Israel, lived a man named Manoah. He and his wife had no children. One day, an angel appeared to Manoah's wife. The angel said, 
You will soon give birth to a child. But remember one thing. His hair should never be cut. Your child will be very special, as he will be chosen by God. One day, he shall rule Israel. During this time, the people had left God out of their lives. They thought they could take care of themselves and not need God's help. What they did not realize was that they would soon need Him to help them. The people of Israel began to get bullied by their enemies, the Philistines. The Israelites prayed to God, and God heard them, and He sent this chosen baby to Manoah's wife. Manoah's wife gave birth to a beautiful little boy, and she named him Samson. As Samson grew up, the Lord blessed him. He became one of the strongest men in the world. Once when Samson was young, a lion attacked him. But Samson was filled with God's power, and he was able to defeat and kill the lion with his bare hands. The Philistines' cruelty over the Israelites grew more and more every day. This made Samson very angry, and he planned a revenge. Samson caught hold of three hundred foxes and tied their tails together, two by two. Then he placed flaming torches between them and released the foxes in the grain fields of the Philistines. Samson's action made the Philistines very, very angry, and now they wanted revenge for their losses. As per his plans, Samson let himself be caught, tied up, and taken away by the Philistines to be killed. He knew God was there to help him. Soon after his capture, the spirit of God came upon Samson. He became stronger than ever. He broke loose of the ropes which kept him tied, picked up a fresh jawbone of a dead donkey, and with it killed a thousand of the Philistines and escaped. Philistine soldiers went out searching for him, and once again Samson was captured. The soldiers put him in a city and locked the city gates. But God's strength and power was in Samson, and he walked out carrying the city gates on his shoulders. But soon Samson failed God by disobeying him. Samson told his wife Delilah all about the secret of his strength. Samson did not know that Delilah was a Philistine spy. After finding out his secret, Delilah called in a barber and shaved off Samson's hair while he was asleep. It was then that the Philistines attacked Samson in his bedroom. Samson tried his best to fight hard, but his strength was all gone. The Philistines blinded him. The enemies captured the blind and weak Samson and made him their slave. They laughed and made fun of him, who was once God's servant. Soon after all this, the Philistines held a feast to celebrate Samson's defeat. They called for him to perform for them and entertain them. A boy brought Samson and let him lean on the pillars which held up the palace, where the Philistines were having their feast. There were more than three thousand Philistines in the room, who all went on making fun of him. But Samson's hair had started to grow back while he was in prison. He prayed to God, "O、oh、Lord, give me strength this one last time, so that I can take revenge for my lost sight." With all the faith in God, straining and heaving, Samson forced the huge pillars apart. The entire place came crashing down in ruins, killing thousands of Philistines 
and Samson. Well, this story is so, so exciting. I wish I was as strong as Samson. You would be if you had lots and lots of spinach. Ew, I hate spinach. Then it's difficult to become as strong as Samson. You've got to eat healthy to be strong. I promise. From today I will. I will be strong too, just like Samson. Oh, yes. The Holy Tales. Then let's begin with the story. I hope you kids are going to love it. King David was a ruler of Israel and he was a great believer in God. During his rule as the king, Israel grew ten times larger than what it was under King Saul's rule. But now, King David was old and sick. He was tired of ruling such a large kingdom. David had many sons and one of them was Adonijah. Even though his name meant, my Lord is God, Adonijah was not a good man. He claimed to the people of Israel that one day he would rule the kingdom. He even tried to steal his father's throne, knowing that King David was too weak to resist him. But that was not God's plan for Israel and its people. David's wife, Bathsheba, knew that her son Solomon should become the king of Israel. She informed David about Adonijah's plan and immediately David gathered all his leaders and declared Solomon as the new king of Israel. Soon David fell very ill. Before his death, he said to his people, Believe in Solomon. He is the one chosen by God to be your king. The people of Israel believed what David said. After his father's death, King Solomon sat on the throne and firmly established the Israel kingdom once again. During his rule, King Solomon remembered the one advice that his dead father gave to him. He had said, Always follow God's path and you shall prosper in everything that you do. One night, God appeared in Solomon's dream. He asked him, If I grant you one wish, what would you ask for? You may ask for anything that you want. O oh Lord, give me wisdom to be a good king. That's all I ask for. Solomon's request pleased God, and he granted his wish along with great honor and riches. One day, two mothers came to King Solomon for justice. One of them fell to his feet and cried. This woman's son died in the night and she switched her dead baby with me. She took away my living baby. No, I did not switch the babies. The dead baby is yours and the one that is alive is mine. It was difficult for Solomon or anyone to tell which of them was speaking the truth. However, he soon had a plan. He called out for a sword. Bring me a sword. One of his soldiers followed his orders and immediately brought him a sword. Solomon said, Now divide the baby into half. Give one half to each of them. The entire court was silent. The real mother of the living baby cried out, Oh my Lord, please do not kill my baby. Give her my child. Let him be divided. He shall be neither yours nor mine. King Solomon immediately knew who the real mother was. He ordered his soldier, Give the baby to the first woman. I know she is the real mother. The people of Israel were very happy with Solomon's judgment. They understood that God's wisdom was in him. 
the people of Israel had no temple to worship God. When David decided to build a temple for his people, God had appeared to him and said, It is your son who will build the house in my name. So, when Solomon became the king, he started building a wonderful temple for God. It took seven long years to complete the temple. But the day had arrived when Solomon gathered all his people and dedicated the temple to the Lord. The people and the king offered their prayers and thousands of sacrifices to God in the temple. They even held a great feast which lasted for two weeks. One day after this, God appeared to Solomon once again. He promised to bless Solomon and his people if they continued to obey God. Sadly, neither the king nor his people obeyed God all the time. While Solomon wasted his time disobeying God, one of his officers, Jeroboam, had a strange experience. One day, Jeroboam met a prophet who said, God will soon be dividing Solomon's kingdom for disobeying him, and you will rule over ten of the twelve tribes. Hearing this from the prophet, Jeroboam quickly escaped to Egypt, knowing that Solomon would kill him if he stayed. Years passed, and Solomon grew old. Finally, he died. His son Rehoboam sat on the throne after his father's death, and he taxed the people even worse than what his father did. This angered the tribes, and ten of them rebelled against him. Solomon's kingdom got divided into two, and the ten tribes chose Jeroboam as their king, just as the prophet had said. Holy, that was indeed a wonderful story. Told you, you're going to love it. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep.